Afternoon guys, a uh, bit of an update for this week. Um, first thing is new microphone, so sound should sound better. If it doesn't, then I think it's the room echo and there's not a lot I can do about that besides change the room. I might spin the desk around actually, I might do that today. Because uh, one thing you can't see, I do have a big rug under this computer. Um, I might actually take that out and get it washed since the, we've had some good weather as well. Um, but anyway, moving on. Maybe in the Philippines very, very soon. Things are moving along now. Um, I'll start at the beginning, move it forward, try and cover it in about 30 seconds. April's mother, birth certificate, took it to get a passport sorted. They wouldn't accept it because her father's name was spelled wrong. So that had to go back, be done, took ages. Passport authority then gave April's mother a passport. These idiots that were complaining about that spelling mistake on the birth certificate misspelled uh, Judith. They got Judith with the I and the T back to front. So that was found a week before we had the interview at the embassy. Um, April's mother's got the same problem I have in relation to glasses. So she hadn't noticed it because obviously she couldn't see it very well. Cause, you know, passport text isn't the best anyway. So that had to then go away, cancel the appointment, reschedule it. And that's where we got to this week. Um, with the Spanish Embassy, the agency, an agency deals with it. So you submit your paperwork to the embassy, uh, the agency. They flick through it all, ask you for a certain documents, see what's missing, and then once it's all there, prepared, and they're happy with it, they'll submit it to the embassy. They then, <laughs> they then give you a bit of paper and a text, and they say they'll text you when you know, um, relating to the appointment. The text actually is to say they submitted the document. The bit of paper they're giving you actually has your time at the embassy. Um, April's mother didn't notice that they had an 8.30 a.m. appointment for the following day until lunchtime the following day. Um, and why I'm laughing, there were some arguments that went on between the people that were there over who was responsible for not noticing. Um, but lucky enough, they went to the embassy and explained the issue. The guards rescheduled and they went for the appointment. Um, and then at three o'clock in the morning, we get a call from here because I submitted my bank statements and other information and support and documentation that we could support April's mother even outside of her own finances. Um, so they wanted to see my relationship to my wife to connect me to April's mother. So they wanted the, the marriage certificate. So at three o'clock in the morning, April's rushing around, scanning it, sending it to the Philippines, getting um, sorted out in the Philippines and then taking to the embassy while the appointment is ongoing. Now, one of the things I do want to stress here is a big thank you. Thank you to Andrew and Mylene Swarbrick for everything they've helped with with this. And um, also they all the staff. The staff has been fantastic as well. We're helping with this and many other issues we've had relating to embassy stuff. So really appreciate everything they've done and very, very good friends of ours. And I have to say, I haven't even met. I, I've not met them in person. April has, the kids have, but Manila is somewhere I try and avoid and they're, they're in McCarthy. So it's, it's, it's one of those things, I want to meet up with them, have a, you know, spend a couple of days there, going in with them for a couple of days, um, but just haven't had the opportunity. But a big thank, out, thank you for these guys because they helped a lot to get this done. I know it would have been very much, much harder without them. Much ridiculous. So I really appreciate everything they've done for us. Um, they also helped with April's paperwork as well for when April was coming to Europe. One of the things I will say about that, that was a bit of a lengthy process as well, but I've, I've covered that before, so I'm not going to cover that too much. So right now, everything's been submitted, and I've got my fingers crossed at the minute because quite simply, I do think we're there. I'd say 97%, because the reasons I think this is the agency's already verified it. The, all the documents, the way they like it. It's gone to the embassy. The embassy's had the interview and we, they got every document they wanted. So I'd assume they would have brought something up there and then to say, well, no. So I'm fingers crossed we're 97% there. So it, that last 3% could be anything unknown. So I'm just hoping things go through. Um, as soon as that happens, 
I'll be in the Philippines. Hopefully I have enough time to meet up with the Swarbricks. Also, hopefully um, we'll be getting April's mother over here on holiday. Just come and see and experience Spain for a month. Um, along with the fact that this should open up being able to get April's mother a um, couple of trips a year over to Spain. Um, as well as now April will be able to travel back to the Philippines. Because one of the things we were concerned about is because April's father passed away last year, that us going to um, the Philippines, there'll be the thought of us leaving, you know, because she's in quite a large house on her own, except for Jay living in the other compound next door. Um, so, you know, there's that thought of people arriving and they're going to be leaving soon. But with this, she's going to be coming to Spain, seeing, experiencing Spain, and then... I'm going to sort out April to go back on a holiday as well so she can do her bit in the Philippines. Um, and then obviously I've been out there as well, so I'm happy. Everyone is happy. And, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It should be quite interesting. Um, so, yeah, that's that's a, an update. Oh, politics. Politics, um, you probably noticed a fair few topics relating to it on the channel. The reason for that is it's what people ask me and ask me relating to different things. So it goes from Philippines to Spain to random things about Brexit and everything else because it's just what people ask me and Peter. Peter's got to be one of the uh, founding members of Questions recently um, because Peter lives near me. So we, we meet up now and again and we have chats about different things and that's where Tommy Robinson come from. Um, also, relating to Summit Locally, which I have an interest in, is 47 people were arrested yesterday relating to fixing the uh, Spanish residency, uh, Spanish citizen test, similar, similar to the UK citizen test. Um, I've got to admit, if they find out these people are from the same issue as the UK, that they come from certain groups, because um, they call themselves British, but they're, they're defined as like British Asian, British this, British that. Um, the connections they have between the UK and where they, their families originally come from is often where the corruption happens. My personal view on this is don't let them run any of these places. Um, I would recommend that you should simply just do uh, anybody who works here has to have been in the UK for over 25 years and, and have a connection to the UK government. You know, and they're saying, you know, retired civil servants. Somebody that is in a position of trust. Because um, these things happen all the time. And I do think if you removed uh, the ability for some of these groups to be able to orchestrate this corruption, because other people sit the exams for them, this is what's going on, you would remove all of it. You'd get rid of it. And anybody that is from, you would have to have zero connection with any of the countries that are sitting the test. Because at the end of the day, if they're coming in from... Latvia, nobody in that room that does sitting on the test exam side um, as a mediator, a reviewer, whatever you want to call it, should be from Latvia. They should have no connection with Latvia, whatever. Shouldn't have any connection with Europe. You'd be better off purely being Glaswedian or something, uh, whose descendant was Italian 20 years ago. <laughs> you know, there's no connection with Latvia. And I, it's a very simple thing to do, and I know people will complain, oh, yeah, but that's, like, um, unfair with other people not being able to apply for their jobs. It's a corruption issue. You don't let a bank robber work behind the bank as a clerk. Generally, they have been ruled out for that job in the future after doing the bank robbery, um, quite simply. I think you sometimes you have to tar everybody with the same brush. Uh, brush. Um, purely because it is a big problem and you're dealing with immigration it's a serious problem but anyway moving on for that yeah spain caught 10 uh, 47 people yesterday for doing that sort of thing next thing is uh channels nearly hit 10,000 subscribers which is a big thank you to everybody and if we get to 10,000 would really appreciate it um be a nice milestone for the channel uh, one of the things i do want to stress though is the channel is not mainly well it's not mainly financially I don't actually do it for financial reward, actually. It's not mainly. I don't do a financial reward. It is monetized. The money does go to the Philippines, but it has paid for 
medical services. It's paid for um, renovations on properties out there. It has paid for um, incubators and stuff as well. It's paid for a lot of things that I don't mention on the channel, but that's because it doesn't need to be mentioned because it's just one of those things. But I do appreciate um, anybody that helps the channel grow, anybody appreciates and enjoys the channel. It's, I, I like it. And on top of that, I really appreciate anybody that's actually prospered from it. It's good to see people getting some positive stuff out of it. Um, so a big thank you for everybody. And if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. Invite other people to subscribe. Help grow the channel to that 10,000. I'd appreciate it. Um, and what else has been going on? Spain's been pretty quiet lately. Um, the weather's just improved. So we haven't been doing much. Because as you know, when we went all the way down to the Alhambra, which is a massive castle down in Granada, um, it rained the whole time. So we're on that curve but the weather's changing. But now that the weather's changing, um, it should time quite well with April's mother coming over. So it should have some more interesting stuff coming up. I have to sit and get my stuff ready for that. I'm just looking at my drones at the minute and I'm thinking it's about time we got a drone out as well because the weather's been too windy to take one of those guys out. Um, but yeah, looking forward to doing some more stuff on that as well. Uh, Business-wise, uh, the power plants are starting to move along as well. Um, so there'll be more stuff on that. And if you are interested in selling power plants, um, get in touch as well. Um, because quite simply, there is money to be made in this. Um, and as people on the channel, if you're a subscriber, if you're involved with this, I do support people on the channel. As such, people support the channel. So if I can actually help people grow as well, all for it. The tires convert tires and plastic into um, diesel, electricity, black carbon, recover the metals and are financially profitable as well, which are all good signs of a viable business. Um, so selling them, we appreciate. Anybody wants to get involved, please get in, get in touch. There is some good money to be made on it. And myself, I'm looking at us opening at least 200 of these things over the next couple of years. Um, but it starts with getting the ball rolling, um, which is currently ongoing. But thanks for watching. And thanks for the update and thanks for um, supporting the channel.